Hello everyone, this is AK. In this video, I'm going to perform one simple task, which is very important while loading the data from one source to another. Basically, we are going to copy the data from source to one particular destination, but there is some complexity present in this task. Take an example, we have one table called source table. Consider this table as a streaming data. Meaning of streaming data is every second, we will get a new data from the source. So when we are migrating the data from source to destination, we must need to load the files incrementally. Meaning of incremental loading is, Take an example, you have the timestamps in your data. Once you load those first batch of data into the destination, after few minutes, new data will be updated in the source table. Because you are handling here the streaming data, not only for streaming data, if, if your source gets updated with the new records, you should load the updated records into the destination. You don't need to load again the entire records into the destination. So this is called incremental loading. Majority of times, incremental loading pattern will be the case for most data engineering projects and use cases. So I thought of sharing my knowledge on these concepts. Before getting to this video, do like, share, comment and subscribe for more data engineering and data science videos. Let's start this video. First, you need to create one source table. I open few services on Azure. Our primary service on Azure is Data Factory. Using ADF, we are going to perform the incremental loading operation. And secondary one is Azure SQL Database. So open the query editor on SQL and create the source table here. After creating the table, you should insert some values into the table. For this video, I'm inserting some dummy records, but in reality, you may have different columns. But the main idea and logic is same. You can implement this logic on your data pipelines for performing the incremental loading. So now our source table is ready. It has around 5 records for different dates. Suppose if my source gets updated after some time, our destination should have the latest records. Now you need to create another table that should be our reference table. So in this table, you should have to insert the source table name and the latest date in the reference value. So using this reference value column, we will update the data into the destination. So in the source table, I have the five records which are in the range of 1 to 5th March. So if any records which are less than or equal to the reference date, those date of records will insert into the destination table. Now we have to create a steward procedure. It will update the last modified date in the reference table. So every time we don't have to change the date in the reference table. Okay. Once you write this procedure and it's connected to the pipeline, all the updating process will happen automatically without any manual intervention. So these are the requirements we have. Now open the data factory, first you have to create one lookup activity. Lookup activity is basically a reference activity. It uses our database as a reference point. Here we are going to use two references. One is for source table and another one is for reference table. I used here two lookup activities. In the first lookup activity, I created a linked service for my reference data set. I'm not going to cover how to create a linked service for Azure services. It is a bit of basic and time consuming. So go through my other videos for basic information on Azure, like how to create a linked service and, uh, and data sets. So here I attach my linked service with my lookup activity. So now this lookup activity will refer my reference table in the database. Next, the second lookup activity. Here I attach my source table. That's our main table. We're going to migrate this table into the destination. So in this lookup activity, I made one query. So this lookup activity takes that last updated record date as a reference date. So based upon this reference, it will move forward to the next process. So look at this. I wrote a query of selecting the maximum date from the updated date. So it will take my last updated record as my reference. Now we need the main activity that is the copy activity. Using the copy activity, we will uh, move the data from source to destination. So in the copy activity, I made one condition. If, the if any data gets updated in my source, it should be greater than my first lookup reference and less than or equal to my second lookup reference. So this condition will check the date columns of the two tables that we created. It will compare those new updated record dates with the two references. If it satisfies my condition, then only it will update the new records into my data set. So every time the data gets updated, basically it will check the dates as my main column because I selected the dates as my primary column for incremental loading. So if you have different requirement, then you can select your different columns for the incremental loading. And finally, I attached my stored procedure. So once this pipeline finds any latest records, this stored procedure will fetch the latest date of those records and it will put it on a reference table. So we don't need to change the dates every time. So it will automatically process the latest dates in our pipeline. That's all about the pipeline setup. Let's run this pipeline.
so you can see here in the first run it copies the entire data into my destination so now i'm going to insert the new records into my source table my pipeline identifies the data based on the dates when i insert the new data with the incremental dates it will copy those records which contain the incremental dates to my destination as a separate file let's check that so here i inserted the data into my source let's run this pipeline once more So see this, we got the updated records into the destination as a separate file. So this means our pipeline works fine. And this process is very important, especially if you are working on a data loading process. I know you want to understand this video in a single watch if you watch this video without any practice. So make sure to practice the concepts on your own. That's all about this video. Thanks for watching and thank you. See you on next another video.